Fred Alexander woke up cold, naked and afraid in a dark cupboard one day after he'd been to the pub. I must have been really drunk to be like this. Did I do something stupid? Fred, being an enchanter, tried to leave with magic without opening the door. Being naked, it would look a little odd to just stroll outside. Someone's cast an entrapment spell on it. This isn't one of my kind, the magicians. It's more likely a human. Clumsy, but effective. Fred realized it was a trap and he couldn't escape. He saw blood on the floor, his blood. He was confused and scared. Fred looked at himself. He was unharmed. I must have died. My body heals itself when I die and it returns to life, unlike the rest of my kind. A man opened the door of the cupboard expecting to see a corpse. Outside there was a table of tools to cut up the corpse and dispose of him. The man looked at him, confused and angry. You're not dead? No. The man stabbed Fred in the heart and the bleeding Fred dropped to the ground dead. The killer closed the door to let him bleed out as he washed his bloody hands and the knife. Then he got a coffee and sat for a while. The killer came back. Sure his victim would have bled out and wouldn't make too much of a mess. He opened the door looking at the floor to see a lots of blood and his victim's feet. What? I'm still here. What are you? Not dead. I'll fix that, said the man, killing Fred again, stabbing him in the guts and leaving him to die again, closing the door. Coming back a while later with an axe, he talked to the door. If you're not dead, you'll want to be, said the killer to the door before he opened it, expecting to find his victim alive again. He looked inside and found Fred lying bled to death on the floor, dead. So the killer picked up the tall, slippery, bloody corpse out of the cupboard with effort. He put him on the table and prepared to cut up the body. The killer raised the axe over the neck of the corpse, but it didn't hit the corpse's neck. It hit something else. The confused killer tried again, but it stopped again. The killer suspected something fishy. What's going on here? Said the killer, frustrated. The thing that stopped the axe appeared. It was made of metal and had a wooden handle. What? Said the shot killer, seeing a stranger. Are you here to take him? No, why did you kill him? He was the leader of an alien hive. Leader of what? Does that look like a queen to you? Said the disgusted stranger, pointing at the corpse. The killer looked at the blood-stained body. It was obviously male. No, he was a king and emperor to the hive. Isn't that the same thing? An emperor and king? Not in his case. They called him the emperor of the universe and the king of the earth. Oh, that's who he was, was he? Yes, why are you protecting him? The stranger looked at the dead man. Maybe I knew him in another life. Who are you? I'd rather not say maybe I'm his bodyguard. What use is a dead alien? Let me dispose of him. I'd rather you'd not hack him up. Misguided loyalty, said the killer. No, said the stranger, who disliked zealots like this killer, who he was tired of and knew he knew too much to live. But the stranger could not do anything yet. If he removed his weapon, Fred would lose his head. They knew they were in a stalemate. If one of them removed their weapon, the other would strike. They stood like that for an hour, chatting, neither flinching, waiting for the other to grow tired to no avail. Five hours passed and they grew tired. They were hardly able to keep their weapon arms still. They grew shaky on the sixth hour. The killer grew drowsy and dropped his axe as he dozed off. The stranger walked over to the dead man, touched his chest and melted into the corpse, which promptly healed and came back to life. Fred sat up disoriented and saw the killer, knowing sadly he must die. No one could know about his afflictions of having a grim reaper. The stranger as a soul and his dying and coming back to life would bring down his empire. A dead man or a living dead man could not be emperor. Fred sadly slew his killer and dismembered him with the skill of a former coroner, which he was, and disposed of the body, praying not to get caught as a killer and the disposing of the body. He wasn't and told no one of the kidnapping and killing.